Terwilliger. He eats curve. Pearson signed for a curve. <laughs> you signed for a curve? Yes, sir. I must have missed my sign. But I seen Rogowski flashing in as plain as the nose on your face. I was looking at Simpson. Why? He's more beautiful to look at. <laughs> <laughs> was this not an odd numbered inning? Yes, sir. But I thought it was an even numbered inning. What the hell do you think they built scoreboards for? <laughs> Count by odds. Uh, one. Three. Uh, five. Seven? Uh, nine. Great! <laughs> I'm Mike Menendian, the, uh, the director of the play, and um, Bang the Drum Slowly is a, a simple buddy story, basically about two very different men, young men on a baseball team, a professional New York baseball team. One is the star pitcher of the team and the other one is the third string catcher. The pitcher finds out that the catcher, Bruce, is, um, has a fatal disease, Hodgkin's disease, and uh, takes it upon himself to go beyond just simply being a roommate but being sort of a guardian protector for Bruce. Arthur. Ask them little. How do you play tag war? Tag war? Yes. Tag war? T-E-G-W-A-R stands for the exciting game without any rules. No rules? No. Oh. You make up the rules as you go along. It's a card game for rubes. <laughs> if I tell you something, don't laugh. I'm not liable to laugh for some time. I owe 40 pints of blood to the United States Bureau of Internal Revenue, and I'm liable to never play baseball again rather than play for slave wages. I've been handed a crappy deal. I'm doomed. I'm falling off this board laughing. <laughs> oh, but the world is rosy. It never looked better. Bad things never look so little, and the good things never look so big. Food tastes better. Things don't matter much anymore. Like you take, I used to wash my car all the time. I used to worry about it. <laughs> Sometimes I laid in bed late at night and couldn't sleep thinking about my dirty car. Sure needs it. <laughs> During the course of the story, uh, they bond in ways that um, at first you wouldn't expect these two very different people uh, to connect. Uh, authors often thought of Bruce as being less than whole, uh, simple, and perhaps uh, not very intelligent, but begins to start teaching uh, Bruce the ropes and how to be a smarter player, and, and Bruce surprises him. I'm Michael Stiegel, and I'm playing author. I'm Kevin Duvall, and I'm playing Bruce Pearson. Well, they're roommates during the baseball season, and uh, Bruce really looks up to my character, author, and author's always sort of shunned him away, and then when we find out that Bruce is, you know, has Hodgkin's disease, he takes him under his wing and, you know, he teaches Bruce as much as they can, and, you know, they actually start learning from each other. Yeah, it's sort of a copacetic, symbiotic relationship of learning through life experience, I guess. My name is Joshua J. Volkers, and I am playing the part of Goose. Goose is a stinker. Uh, he likes to cause trouble, uh, he likes to give Bruce, the simpleton of the play, a lot of grief, a lot of hassle. Um, my belief is because Goose at one time was a very good catcher, uh, his progress was blocked by a much better catcher ahead of him on this team, and now his progress again is being blocked by this simpleton who he feels is beneath him. and this creates great anger in him that he takes out in teasing and bullying Bruce. Hi, my name is Kristen Williams and I'm playing Katie in the show. Uh, she's the sort of madam to the stars in New York City and she um, forms this relationship with Bruce. They've been seeing each other for a couple years now but of course she has other patrons that come to her and Bruce has several times asked her to marry her, her to marry him but um, she's always turned him down because the money is not there. Um, but when she finds out that he's ill, 
she suddenly changes her tune and she's very excited about marrying Bruce. And so she wants him to change his beneficiary so she can become the head of the estate if he does pass away. And she just comes off as this gold digger, you know, that just is in it for the money. And it was it was so fun to create because at the beginning of the play, she's so happy and oh, everything is great. And then as the play progresses, you see this side come out of her that is just evil. <laughs> I'm Tim Walsh. I play Dutch Schnell, the long-suffering manager of the New York Mammoths. As the play begins, he has finally assembled the team that he knows is going to bring him, take him to the pennant, win the, win the pennant, and he is thrown a curve uh, at the very, very last minute by his star pitcher, Henry Wiggin, author, um, who has developed a bond with the other main character, Bruce Pearson, and gives Dutch essentially an ultimatum. Either Bruce stays with the team, or if Bruce goes, Author has to go with him. And in the end, when he finally finds out the truth, I think everybody is surprised to see that uh, he's not so angry at all. More understanding and, um, and, and uh, probably a little, bit, uh, a little bit more sympathetic, not only to, to Author, but to Bruce. Um, part of it, I think, is because they have traveled all the way down and are on the verge of, of winning, the, uh, winning the pennant. But um, his human side finally breaks through in the, last, uh, in the last third of the play. So, I really like the story a lot for several reasons. One, baseball has uh, always been uh, betty, betty good to me. Uh, baseball has been something that I've followed for a long time. Uh, as a son of immigrant family, it was something that I was able to latch onto when I was pretty young and uh, certainly other people have said that if you really want to uh, understand America, you want to understand baseball and the history of baseball is very, very parallel to the history of the country. Uh, baseball, I think, is about a lot more than just the actual sport. It's, it's a memory. Well, it's sport. the American pastime. And like, you know, your friendship with childhood friends that you played the game with, you know. Oh, yeah. Your parents teaching it to you, it's, it's very personal. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting because my character is on stage a lot of the time and he's talking to the audience. So it's, um, I've always, I've been a little separated from it, but, you know, I get to watch all these interesting things that they're doing. Because while I'm talking, I mean, you'll see the whole team and their different rituals with, you know, how they get ready and how they interact with each other. And there's all these beautiful little relationships uh -huh. built in between all of these characters that, you know, the audience might not catch, but like if your eyes looking over there, you're going to see something really interesting. When everyone has a good hold on their, the restraint of their character and their relationship, that's when like it really blooms. And I think that we have such a strong cast that I think it's really going to, spring is going to spring. <laughs> Raven Theatre, which I'm a producing artistic director of, has always committed to uh, uh, great American stories, stories that really reflect the, uh, the American experience. And uh, nothing could be more American than a story about baseball uh, since, the, since the game itself was invented here in this country. So on many, many different levels, I think this play really works well for us at Raven.